Hello everyone, welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. This role here bringing you a hot off the press back-to-back -back yellow card combos. Now it's going to be very similar to what Tony showed you last time with the big multi-attack 5 Vanguard re-stand last mark combo. And in a similar vein, we're sticking with Link Joker and with Messiah, but instead we're going to show you a bit of the more unusual cards in the clan. So as you know, with the construction rules, you can play any reverse units in the Link Joker deck. And with Clan Collection Volume 3 and 4 coming out very, very soon in English, I thought I'd show everyone the reverse units to look out for and how to make the most out of them. Now, some of these aren't exactly combos. The first few are going to be more like synergies and interactions and lines of play you can do. But I think it's worth showing because I think these are going to be the better reverse units to put into Link Joker and how you can make the most out of them. So without further ado, we have a lot to get on. So let's just jump right into it. So the first one, as you can see here, involves Kyaki. Now I think Kyaki is actually probably the best reverse for Link Joker full stop just because of what the text does. So let's quickly remind everyone. So the translation is uh, Deck Vanguard Rearguard, it's counted as Kyaki Vogue, which is an irrelevant line of text for Link Joker because you can't play Kyaki Vogue. The second effect is an act. Once per turn, Soul Blast 1, search your deck for up to three cards with the same name as this and call them. Then shuffle your deck. Afterwards, up to the number of rear guards called, lock your own rear guards. So if you call two cards, you lock two. If you call one card, you lock one. And if you call three, you lock three. You don't have to lock the cards you called. You can lock other things. But if you can, if you want to, you can lock the cards you call. And finally, the third effect is in your end phase, when your lock card is unlocked, you can pay the cost, which is put one of your rear guards on the bottom of your deck. And if you do, choose one of your rear guards and return it to the hand. Now, there's a lot of synergy in its second effect already. The fact that Link Joker is known as a clan, especially Messiah, that locks its own cards a lot, we can get a lot of mileage out of this second effect. So I'm going to show you two lines of play at once here that you can do, which is really effective. So the first line of play involves having Metallia Messiah. Now the important line of text on Metallia Messiah is that it cannot be locked by card effects, no matter what, like it just cannot be locked. And what's relevant here is we're going to use Hyaki, we're going to solve last one, and search for two Hyakis from the deck. There's one, and there's two. Now, we would have an Axel Circle here, and if you want, you can put this Hyaki on that Axel to attack with. It's not the big deal. The point is, because we've called two rear guards, we have to lock two of our rear guards. And one thing you can do is, you can try to lock Metallia Messiah. But obviously, Metallia Messiah can't be locked by card effects, so it doesn't get locked. So you just lock the one back row instead, which means you are able to plus two to the board for the cost of one card being locked. And as you're about to see, that one card being locked isn't actually a cost. Because the second thing we can do here is, let's just quickly give ourselves the damage. So you can then attack with Gastro. This is still on the same turn, totally doable. You can attack with Gastro, and at the end of its battle, counter blast one, lock from hand, to draw a card. Pretty normal, you know, you've used this effect loads of times before to get Volkos onto the board, whatever. Anyway, after that all happens, you know, you attack with your Vanguard, you do whatever. In your end phase, you now have two things that will unlock, which means that this Hyaki effect will go off twice. So we can bot deck two cards to return two cards to hand. The other one being the Gastro, so we don't need it anymore, because we've already set up our board. So then bounce one of the Hyakis we've called to hand, which then becomes either Rewrite Photo for another Axel 2, Stride Photo, so you can start striding, or just you know an extra piece you can discard for perfect cards or whatever. What it basically lets you do is, by using Gastro, you were able to trade cards in hand and on board for an extra card in hand on board you know, like you refund the call from hand to get the draw so you draw one off of the gas draw and then you bounce an extra card to the hand so that's where the plus one comes from so that's one of the reasons that Hyaki is really really insane it also really helps in you know just both v and premium in that you're able to keep your board fairly clean if you don't if you don't have volkos you can put back stuff that you would otherwise get retired to get bounced into hand and keep them safe and just leave your opponents with no rear guards to attack Thus, they're forced to take to you, give you damage, and then you can swing back with whatever combos you want. Now, the second line of play I'm going to be showing you is the Himiko Reverse play. Now, Himiko Reverse doesn't seem like it'd be that amazing a card, but it actually has a really huge defensive application in Messiah. So, to remind you of the effect, it is, it's got an irrelevant hand effect that lets you rewrite it. You're never going to use that, don't worry. But the main thing we're looking for here is the second effect, which is, when this unit either attacks 
or is attacked once per turn, you can counter blast one. If you do, draw a card, choose either a critical trigger or a draw trigger from your soul, put it onto a rear guard circle as a locked card. Then, for each of your locked cards, activate that card's trigger effect that many times. So if you have two locked cards and then you locked one extra, you get three triggers. And that's during when it's attacked as well, which is absolutely huge. So we can abuse this with the fact that so many Link Joker cards lock themselves to give us massive defensive lines of play. And there's two ways of going about this, and I'll show you both of them right here. So the first one is setting up like a normal Messiah board. Now, these are five rare guards that if you've played Messiah before, you're used to seeing on the board, especially in premium. So what we're going to do here is stride and go into our good old friend, Flagellate Messiah. Now, those of you who know what this card does, already see where we're going with this. But the important line of text on Flagellate Messiah is that you can choose any number of locked cards and they don't get unlocked during that player's next end phase. Which means, when we do our regular combo, you know, like this little attack, lock itself, this will lock itself to unlock this, this will attack, lock itself, plus 10k here, this will lock itself to unlock this, this will attack, plus 10k here, lock itself, then this will attack, lock itself, which causes this to lock. Then we attack with Flagellant Messiah, kind of lost one, flip one, choose to unlock this and nothing else, and then, even though you only locked one, you can choose any number of locked cards, which means we can choose our own entire board of these four rear guards and lock them, Omega lock them. So at the end of the turn, this goes back and these don't unlock which is important because then when we're attacked by our opponent, we can counter blast one, grab this crit that went to soul because you know, the crit puts itself into soul, put it on rear guard as a locked card, and then we activate this trigger effect five times. So we get five crit, which is rather than the defensive, but we become 63k defensive, which I don't think there's a single deck that can get past that normally without hitting like several triggers or extending with a big combo of their own. Which basically means if you do it on the first attack that you're attacked, your opponent's turn almost basically ends unless they hit an over trigger, which is great. Now, of course, if you don't want to use flagellate for whatever reason, or you know, you've like don't have enough pieces to lock yourself, like you know, let's say that your board isn't like sacrificing dynamis, your board is like random bits and pieces. Well, there's another way of going about it. As long as you're on GB1, there's a G guard, which as we know, is Lacus Karina, who lets you lock up to three of your own ray guards. So we'll get counter blast one, flip any G guard, and lock three of our own rear guards. And that already locked three of your opponent's back row, which was already huge for disruption. But then, assuming we had another counter blast, you could Himiko again, crit, and become 53k defensive because there are four locked cards, which is great. Now the one slight downside to Himiko, well, there are two actually. The first one is really slight, which is that you have no reliable way of getting draws into soul because you have very little blind soul charge outside of like integral and the g lady fencer and maybe legrand jard if you're using the rear guard effect uh if you want to like reliably get draw triggers in soul you have to use the old g ones uh child of super string you know into soul plus 3k which means it's only a 5k defensive which means when you lock five rear guards you'll only get plus 25. i mean 38k defensive is still nothing to worry about you know it's still pretty good Especially when you're drawing five cards, it's just probably not worth it. You know, you probably still want to run like draw PGs, crits, and heals, and just hopefully you just sack a draw PG in through your soul charges, or you can just get a crit in from from the crits in soul effect. But the bigger problem with Himiko is that you have this massive defensive play that just ends your opponent's turn, which is cool, but then there's no real follow up because Himiko herself isn't a messiah. Most of your strides that unlock your rear guards are limited like you can only go into another flagellant to unlock your board and attack with and even then you still have to deal with this crit that's just on the board like sure you can go into soul draw a card and plus 10k again but it's not like volko it's not fencer it's not extending your attacks and anything else that requires you to like that would otherwise let you put forward a really good offense is messiah locked so it's either you have to lack this karina into the big defense or a mega lock your own board into the big defense and then follow up with the destiny guardian or you just don't have the same sort of kill potential that like say amnesty would have with double volko because you're always going to be calling over something like there's no way if you have double volko already set up then you have to have something in the back row unlock and replace one of your combo pieces like your sacrifice or your dynamis which is also not quite great 
There is still potential. I haven't really worked out like what the best line of play is, but this is the main reason to play Himiko, just by being, you know, 30, 40, 50k defensive, just for cost of counter blast one, as long as you have a trigger in your soul. That is, you know, it's almost unbreakable in a way. So it's pretty good. It just needs to be explored a bit further. So here's the first of our actual combos. And when I say combos, these are in like infinite combos. Like these will either win you the game that turn or the, you know, that's it. Like they will try to win you the game that turn. So the first one we're looking at is Maelstrom Reverse. It's the more interesting one, but it's also the harder one. So before I explain to you the requirements of the combo, let's take a quick look at what Maelstrom Reverse does. The main effect we're looking at here is the first one. The second one is completely irrelevant, which is at the end of the battle that your rearguard attacked, if the attack did not hit, you can choose one of your standing rearguards and lock it. This turn, this unit gains 10,000 power. It has another effect of a Maelstrom and Soul, but again, that's completely irrelevant. You don't need to worry about that. The point is, like I said, when your rearguards attack doesn't hit, lock one of your standing rearguards. That's exactly what we need. So there are two requirements for this combo is one, your opponent is at five damage. It doesn't work if they're on four and they can actually heal out of it, which is the one downside to it. But if they don't have any heals left and you're, they're on five damage, it's a guaranteed snap. And the second requirement is you need to have GB1 because both of these pieces are GB1. So just to remind you, Awakening Messiah is when it's unlocked, choose one of your other rear guards, stand it, and it gains plus 2k. And then G Blast Monk is when it attacks, you can choose a lock card and unlock it. And if you do, this gets 4k. So you have something that unlocks when it attacks and something that stands when it's unlocked. I think you can see where we're going with this. The first thing we're going to do is you need, oh, so Maelstrom has an Axel Circle. So we'll just put any old thing on the Axel Circle here. It'll attack. It probably won't hit because your opponent's on five damage and they need to guard it. So when this doesn't hit, you can lock your Awakening Messiah. You can also lock it through things like the Messiah PG, you know, the one that binds from drops into lock two. Uh, you can also lock it with, say, a Resta if you put the Awakening in the back row. It doesn't matter how you get there, just this Awakening needs to be locked on the board somewhere. So from here, this is where the combo starts. You're going to attack with Blast Monk of the Thundering Foot, whose effect will unlock the Awakening Messiah to give himself 4k. When Awakening Messiah is unlocked, it will stand the Blast Monk and give him 2k. So he's definitely going to hit unless they have a defensive. So they're on 5 damage. If they take this, they die or unless they heal. And if they don't take it, Maelstrom goes off, which causes this to lock at the end of the battle. And as you may notice, at the end of the battle, we are in the exact same position we were at the beginning. The only difference is that Thun Blast Monk of the Thundering Foot has an extra 2k from the Awakening Messiah. And if you look, this is until the end of the turn, not until the end of the battle. So every iteration, Blast Monk of the Thundering Foot is going to get 2k more and more every time. Where, when this is locked, he'll attack, unlock, stand plus 2k. If it hits, they die. If it doesn't hit, you lock the Awakening and you go again. And if they do heal for whatever reason, you still have your Maelstrom Reverse, which has been getting 10,000 power every time you do this. So you can just go, you know, ask for another PG or heal again. So that's your sort of five damage combo. And you, know, you can see it's got, you attack an infinite number of times, like a literal infinite number of times until they take that sick damage and either heal out of it or die. Now, the problem with this combo, why I think it's not very good, is that a, it requires you to be playing Blast Monk, Thundering Foot, and Awaking Messiah, who are both cards that don't really synergize with the new Messiah game plan. You know, the new Messiah game plan is units that lock themselves at the end of the battle, and then you unlock them with a Dynamis, and then you just reset your board and attack multiple times. These two require things to be locked from external sources, which is actually very hard for Messiah to do in a normal situation. So when you're playing things like Volko and Fencer and Lagrangeard, these are cards that will fight the space with your main Messiah engine and your deck either becomes inconsistent or it's just all in on the combo and it does nothing else. And the problem with being all in on the combo and doing nothing else is that for those of you that play Link Joker, you'll understand what I say, but getting your opponent to five damage, especially without like the Volko and the Dynamis engine is very, very, very hard. Like the only way you can reliably try and get there it's the first stride, the barrio end, and just hope that they take it and just like, you know, go to five. That's your only real answer here. Like, if they're not on five damage, the combo just doesn't work because Awakening is locked. You attack with the Blast Monk, which stands the Awakening, and then Blast Monk stands, and then they take the damage, and now you can't do anything. 
because you have no more way of locking the Awakening during your battle phase, and Boss Monk is on attack, not end of battle, so he won't be able to restand because there won't be any more locked Awakings to unlock. So finally, here's the combo that I think is actually worth playing and can actually function as a deck, which is the Ethics Buster combo. Now, this is very similar to the Maelstrom in that it involves an infinite, but rather than infinite number of attacks, you get a num several columns worth of attacks that are infinitely high powered. Now, the benefits of this combo of the Maelstrom is that it doesn't need your opponent to be at 5 damage and it's a lot more flexible. So, in fact, what I'm about to show you now is the basic way to combo off, but you'll see in the next section that there are a lot of you know, alternate routes you can take to get to the same result. Now, you do still need GB1, and as you can see from the board, you're having Metallia, having Awaking, and having White Dwarf, G White Dwarf. We're playing still a lot of cards that don't fact that wouldn't normally clash with regular Messiah. So you know, no Volcos, no Lady Fencer, no Lagrangeard, no Sacrifice. We're just all in on the combo. The difference here is, whereas with the Maelstrom combo, you had the White Dwarf, sorry, the Awaking and the Burst Monk, and they they were your main two combo pieces and nothing else. With this version you actually have a lot more flexibility in the pieces you can find. So for example, here you see we have Metallia and we have Balarotha. They both do the same thing. So you can have two Balarothas, two Metallias, any or. So you have nine, well, eight, and Burst Monk is a ninth, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But you have eight targets for extensions and all you need is the Awaking and Lady Battler to begin with. Like that's the bare minimum. So I did a stream about this a few weeks ago. So if you've missed that, there'll be a link in the description. I think you know, we can put a card up in the corner up there somewhere where I explain the combo and how it works, and I actually test a few like games with the deck. But I'm going to get step through it again, step by step here. So taking a look at Ethics Buster, the main effect we're looking at here is the first one. When your rearguard attacks, if this unit is stand, lock that rearguard. Now, importantly, that happens before it hits. So while Ethics Buster is stood, your rearguards don't hit. But that's fine, because we want it to happen when it attacks. So as you can see, we have the combo of Awaking, who we've just explained, and G White Dwarf, who when she boosts, choose a locked card and unlock it. If you do, the boosted unit gains 4k until the end of the battle. Now what's very important here is that when we have Ethics in stand, and we attack boosted with this column, both Ethics Buster's first effect and White Dwarf will go on standby at the same time. So what you're going to do, you're going to choose to resolve the Ethics Buster first to lock the Awaking so that the attack whiffs. That's pretty straightforward, nothing special there. But then White Dwarf's effect is choose a lock card and unlock it. Oh, look at that. A lock card just appeared while we were doing that. So we're going to unlock this lock card. And obviously the boosted unit doesn't get 4k anymore because the boosted unit no longer exists. But when Awakening stands, it can stand the White Dwarf and give it 2k. Now, again, with every infinite loop, we've just demonstrated that we are in the exact same starting position. You know, we've ended in the same spot we started with our whole board stood and everything else. The only difference here is that this White Dwarf now has plus 2k from the Awakening, which means every time we do this, lock this to unlock this to stand this, White Dwarf will continuously get plus 2k every single time, which means after a certain point, you can just say, I'm going to make White Dwarf gain you know, some multiple of 2k, like 200 million thousand power, just to get over over triggers, or you know, like, Googleplex, whatever number you want, like just some huge unguardable number that basically says PG this column or take damage. And of course, the reason we play Metallia and Balrotha is because Balrotha says whenever a card is locked, he gains 5k, and Metallia is whenever a card is locked or unlocked, he gains 3k. And of course, we're locking and unlocking something every single iteration, which means every time White Dwarf gains 2k, Balrotha gains 5, and Metallia gains 6. Which means if you have this setup, by the time you say, okay, I'm ready to attack, you will have this being on infinite power, this being on infinite power, and this being on infinite power. Now, of course, you can't actually say infinite. The rules say you have to declare a number. It just has to be demonstrate. You have to just have to have it be demonstrably large and you can reliably get there. But you basically can just say it is a number where you have to PG it or you take damage. Now, as you can see, the fact that we have three attacks of infinite power means that if they have zero PGs in hand, you can kill them from 3 damage, because it's 3 attacks, they take 3 damage, and then they have to heal out of it. Now the great other thing is, that for this combo to not interrupt itself, Ethix also has to attack before you start attacking with your infinite powers. Which means, you can drive check crits, 
and put them on your infinite powers. So this is now infinite power with two damage attached to it. Very cool. So here is the quote unquote extension or an alternate line. Now this combo, particular combo, isn't set in stone. This is just one of the many ceilings this combo has. And it just goes to show you that you, know, you don't have to have Battle Road or Metallia to gain infinite power. Here you can see, you know, we have our regular column of the Awakening White Dwarf. This is the gas that gets us going. But then we also have just one Metallia and one White Dwarf. So of the six, seven units we have on board, only two of them have infinite power. But you'll see that with Dynamis, with Blast Monk, we're actually going to get more attacks than if we just had three or four Battle Rothers or Metallias to have infinite power with. So the extra Awakening is just extra extensions. And again, there's lots of variation here. I'm just showing one particular line that you can do. Now, the main cool thing here is that Metallia can't be locked. So when we attack with Metallia while Ethics is stood, Ethics will try to lock him, but can't, so the attack will go through. You see, we have a very similar setup here with one GB up face up, and we have this column. And from here, you can see that we'll actually get more attacks than normal. So we're going to start off by locking these two. You know, pretty savage, you know, just attack with them, just get them locked. Then you're going to attack with Metallia which is already infinite power swing because Metallia is the infinite power and you can't be locked by your ethics. Then at the end of the battle, you now to lock to try and unlock this. When this unlocks, this stands. Cool. The attacks again, goes through. He locks. You just attack with him to just get locked again. Then you attack with Vanguard. When Vanguard attacks, you'll use Dunamis. And so you'll get triggers first. Put triggers. Now, rare in mind, Metallia's already attacked twice before our Vanguard attack. So they've already had to deal with two infinite power swings. So that's either two damage or two PGs gone. You put triggers on Metallia, he can restand. It's just coming at them again and again. So Metallia now has three damage. Cool. If you have O trigger, even better. But these are huge. They're coming in. Then end of battle. Dynamis will proc. To unlock this. This procs. Stand the Metallia. This Metallia now attacks again with the crits this time. You then attack with the Burst Monk to unlock this. This stands this. Again, with the crits this time. And finally, for good measure, you have one more swing here because White Dwarf has the infinite power. So you've just gone through five attacks of infinite powers, two of which had triggers put on them, which is, you know, you only have four circles. So that's more than you would have gotten with the Bala Rotha Metallia engine on its own. So you can see that even though you're playing cards that aren't Volko, that aren't White Lady Fencer, cards that don't normally fit with the regular Messiah theme, because this combo is so self-sufficient and so self-sustaining, you know, any combination like Awakings and Dunamis is an extension. Any combination of Blast Monk and Awakening is an extension. Any Battle Rothers, you can put a Battle Rother behind Vanguard and make your Vanguard at infinite swings and just put all the crits on the Vanguard. Like, that is another line of play you can do as well. So even though this requires you to fully dedicate to the combo, I think it's a lot more stable than the Maelstrom Reverse combo, just because you have so many ways of getting there. Now you can see you have multiple attacks, and the only thing this loses to is if the number of attacks you have combined is less than the number of damage you need to do plus the number of keys in your opponent's hand. So if you're against like Protect 1 deck, it can be quite tough. And of course, against anything that's interaction, like say Denial Griffin, will just destroy this Awakening and then you can't get infinite power and then your combo falls apart. But that's what happens with the infinite combo. That's what you have to respect and play around. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the relevant reverse combos that anyone will need to know. Uh, and that's going to be it for this video. If you like what you see, as always, you know, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. I Be sure to follow us on all social media down below. In fact, I will make sure to tweet whenever myself or Kaelin, you know, my fellow English Link Joker player, whenever we come up with anything new, if we optimize Himiko, if we find a way to make Kakutus work, if we find anything else that's worth sharing, I will be sure to share it on Twitter. So make sure to check us down below. And finally, as of course, we can't finish the video without saying thank you to the sponsor, which is Strictly Broken TCG. You can use the promo code SBTCG Yellow Card on strictlybrokentcg.ca for 5% discount site-wide and it hopefully, if I get this video done in time, this video will be out for Clan Collection, and Clan Collection should already be up for pre-order on the website. So if you want to play this combo, you want your Ethics Reverses, your Himiko Reverses, anything I've shown you in this video so far, once again, sbtcg.ca using code sbtgyellowcard. Until next time, we'll be back with our regularly scheduled content, including more memes, deck profiles, over-explained and whatnot. 
I'll see you then. Bye-bye.